What's up, everyone? Uh, so stoked you're here for uh, my presentation. I hope you're all doing really well. And let's dive into it, okay? I'm just going to set a timer so I don't go over. And uh, so this is my presentation. Uh, I'm going to be going over how to implement curriculum models um, in EPE, all right, or virtual learning, whatever you want to call it. So who am I? I have taught four years. I started my career um, teaching K through 12 uh, health and PE at a small school in Kazakhstan uh, called Quality Schools International. I served as the athletic director there as well. And currently I am in Hanoi, Vietnam, teaching at St. Paul American School. And next year I will be moving to China at Nancha Preparatory College Academy, which is an ISS-based school. Um, so um, at my current job, I am um, teaching middle school and high school PE. And uh, at my next job, I will be teaching high school PE. Um, I'm also a third culture kid, uh, which really uh, helped me dive into international teaching. I knew I wanted to do it at a young age. Both my parents are teachers. I, uh, I grew up in Jakarta, Indonesia, and I attended Jakarta International School, now Jakarta Intercultural School, um, kindergarten through 12th grade. So I moved there when I was very young and spent my whole childhood there. So, so many memories in Jakarta, and I do consider Indonesia to be my home. Um, <clears throat> I also have a podcast called Coach Pat Chat, um, and I um, interview different physical educators, health educators, professors, um, you name it. If I think they um, can be helpful in any way, um, I reach out to them and I also have people reach out to me to come on and it's been really beneficial for me. It's definitely upped the game in my pedagogies and uh, my implementation of teaching. And I think it's been helpful to other people who have listened. Um, so tune in if you're interested. Um, Coach Pat 1984 is my Twitter handle. Um, so if you see any resources that you like and stuff like that, or want to engage in some ideas, hit me up on Twitter for sure. All right, before we dive into the presentation, um, I'm a lighthearted kind of goofy dude. So I made kind of a fun video for you to kind of see teaching style and what PE looks like with Coach Pat. Check it out. So that was my fun little trailer that I made. Um, all the kids were really um, amped to do it. So I just wanted to give you a dive in. All right, what is the purpose of this presentation? Uh, basically, I want to give you some ideas, some resources, and then some examples that have worked for me um, when it comes to utilizing curricular models with at-home learning. And the main reason I did this, like at first, yeah, I would just was kind of playing around with ideas, how to get the kids moving and whatnot. Um, but moving forward, I definitely wanted to um, make sure the educational um, portion of physical education was alive and well. Um, so I'm gonna try to help you uh, find ways to do that. The different models we're going to be using is TGFU, TPSR, cultural studies, outdoor education and adventure education, teaching fitness for understanding health and wellness and sport education models. So let's start with TGFU, Teaching Games for Understanding. Um, I'll be honest, I love this model. Love it, love it, love it, love it. 
So I'm really excited to start off with it. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to pick a category of small-sided games um, you want to run with your students at home, all right? And it's going to involve families, which is so important right now, okay? So on the next few slides, not pages, um, I will give you examples of a game I created um, based off Capture the Flag. It's called Capture the Socks. Okay, so game phase. This really depends on the number of people in your family in order to make teams and whatnot. Basically, there's gonna be a pair of socks and defenders on each floor or different rooms if it's a one-story situation. Teams need to sneak into the room and try to capture the sock and return it to their home floor or home room. Um, you must, you must set safety parameters though, okay? There should be no running at all. Uh, the brisk walking, watch out, especially with stairs involved and doors, antique furniture, stuff like that. Don't want anyone to get hurt. Um, and before I continue, I want you to know that I did a webinar on this just for the parents so they can have access to ways of making this game safe and enjoyable. Okay, so you might want to uh, dive into that idea. It doesn't have to be a webinar, just send them a video. Um, and uh, if you're at an international school, I would recommend using closed captions um, so they can read what you're saying as well. Um, all right, so game appreciation, first phase of TGFU. You're going to discuss the rules of the game in different ways people can be captured, saved, and win, but more so the different avenues where they can reach success. Because the beauty of TGFU is there's multiple ways or pathways to uh, gain success. All right, so first step, if you are tagged, you are captured, okay? Pretty much like capture the flag, but there's a twist that I'll go over in a second. Um, if you bring the flag home safely without being tagged, um, your team wins, okay? So uh, if you are captured, um, due to the limited amount of participants as opposed to a massive PE class, you will spin in a circle five times, or you can do push-ups or jumping jacks, um, anything of that nature, and then head back to home base. You get to start, start again, you, because if not, the game's going to end, and it's going to be like tic-tac-toe cat. Uh, no clear winner, okay? And it's going to be too quick. Uh, but... If you are captured five times, the other team wins. So you really need to develop strategies and stuff like that uh, to be effective and limit your captures. Okay, so I just wanted to give you a visual of how the starting looks, okay? This is an example with stairs. Obviously, if there's rooms, you just set up room, room, okay? No problem. So pair of socks, team, pair of socks, team. Easy peasy. Next, we're gonna talk about ta tactical awareness. So the teams are gonna to start to become aware of difficulties being in different rooms and different floors, and they need to brainstorm how they should attack, the different ways to get around the defender in this scenario. And should they focus on an offensive approach, a defensive approach, or a hybrid of both, okay? So basically, this is another visual. And so blue team starting to go up the stairs. And I only put this red um, individual here just to, due to limited space. But basically, I would suggest having the defender on either side about 10 feet, 8 feet away from the stairs um, because you don't want injuries, okay? So if there was a tag going on right here, there's a high chance of an accident, okay? Um, so you need to make sure you're setting those safety parameters. All right, next part is decision making. All right, this is an amazing reflection and bonding experience for families. And with the education and physical education, you really want to develop that sense of self and social awareness and being able to converse with others and learn from others. Okay, so basically they're going to see those struggles we were talking about in tactical awareness. And how can they be sneaky? Um, realizing they need different strategies to achieve success. Um, you're really giving a lot of autonomy to, and not student choice, but family choice to the people playing the game um, by implementing different stimuli to make the game maybe more challenging with some teachable moments 
Um, so basically, if the game's too easy, they can change the rules and dynamics a little bit to make it more challenging. If it's too difficult, they can do the same thing, but uh, create easier ways or pathways to success. Uh, they also have the ability to completely change the rules of the game as long as the premise of the game still stays intact. Um, and that's the beauty of TGFU. They really can run with it any way they want um, to a certain degree. Okay, and uh, again, the main point of this game is uh, different ways to success, like um, grabbing the flag or capturing someone is not the only way to achieve success. In PE, you always wanna have multiple ways to create success. You can celebrate success that you had a cool move. Maybe you did a shuffle or you crawled around someone or something like that. Um, and you created diversion for your teammate to be able to capture the flag. So there's so many ways to success and that's so important. Okay, so when they're having a conversation about changing, making changes to the game, it needs to be everyone involved. As you can see, there is no team up there. Okay, this is not a team strategy, this is an all game strategy. And you really want them to be able to come together, um, both teams, and come up with ways to make this beneficial for all parties involved. Okay, and lastly, before you actually play the game again with new implementations, you're gonna focus on skill execution. Okay, family's gonna look at movements and which movements are effective, as I stated before. Maybe you're doing a crawl. Maybe you're doing a sidestep when someone tries to tag you. Maybe you do a little spin move, you know? Um, so just uh, analyzing different ways and what uh, movements you're using. Um, you could even incorporate throwing the flag to make it a bit safer, or, or the pair of socks. Okay, because then someone gets tagged, but then someone has access to the flag because um, they caught it. Um, so different, like you're focusing on throwing and catching and those type of dynamics. So um, there's multiple ways to assess and implement this. All right, next, before we continue, I would like to shout out Nathan Horn. Um, this guy's website, uh, ifized.com has so many resources, but when it comes to TGFU, this, this is the mother load right here, man. Um, basically, game sheets, game videos, find a game to match your lesson, and I'm gonna show you an example, but basically I think it's like $5 a month or $50 for the year, and he's constantly adding games and resources for you to download. Um, so I'm actually gonna step away from the presentation real quick and show you just my file of phys ed games that I've downloaded from him. Um, okay, so we're gonna go to the main screen right here. Look, striking and fielding, invasion, target, net and wall. There's so many, okay? So if we can go back to the presentation, yep. And then uh, the cool thing about this was PE at home. Um, I used some of the games that I thought I could use within a household and I adapted them. Uh, if you will, I TGFU'd the TGFU. <laughs> Told you I was a goofy guy. Uh, but you can definitely adapt them and uh, totally use the concepts of TGFU to adapt them to um, an at-home learning environment. So definitely check that out. Okay, how am I doing? All right, good. All right, next uh, model, TPSR. This is super important because in my belief, uh, physical education is an important subject for many reasons, but one of the main reasons is I think it's really where um, students and children become human beings and really learn a lot about themselves and eventually learn the person they want to be. They, by learning values, how to interact with each other and stuff like that, and we're going to get into all of that. But this is, uh, I think, a very important model to always have at your disposal. Okay, so level one is respect. As, as you can see, the key features are controlling behavior, empathy and respect for others, feelings, negotiation strategies, awareness and impact on others. Cool, you already know this, but how can we create e-learning implements? Um, and a lot of this is gonna be pretty self-explanatory, um, but I wanted you to kind of think outside the box and have uh, access to all of this. So, the first thing I want you to do is create an environment of sharing. Excuse me. And what I mean by this is um, 
In order to respect one another, you really need to learn about one another. So if you're, and I'm not talking about sharing equipment, I'm talking about sharing ideas, um, learning from each other. Maybe someone has a stellar idea, but you also have an idea how to even elevate it, it more. And it really um, creates that uh, relationship of listening and leadership, okay? So you really wanna uh, dive into that. So I talked about TGFU before, and you can definitely combine TPSR and TGFU. So if you do group organized TGFU games with the class, you can do breakouts or whatever. Um, this is gonna give voice and conversation to your students. Um, as I said earlier, um, when you're working on tactical awareness or decision-making, uh, teams or groups are coming together and coming up with ideas to make the game more challenging, to make it easier, uh, to switch it up, to make it more enjoyable and more fun. And this is really, um, I found, a point where you may have some shy students who are shy um, basically um, when you're on campus and what I've found they've really found comfort level in this type of implementation and have come up with ideas on their own and been happy to share them and they've been brilliant brilliant idea this is a massive way to um, really include everyone and really give voice to everyone and everyone learns how to respect ideas and also how to collaborate uh, to make a hybrid of ideas into one amazing thought, okay? Uh, you should talk about COVID uh, with your kids. And I do this through office hours, but basically there was an, an instance where a kid was making a joke about COVID and um, he didn't really understand. Um, and that's, like not a bad student, great kid, just didn't understand. And there is a, a, a dynamic in the world of talking trash and stuff like that. Um, and not in a bad way, just egging friends on, like friends joke around and stuff. But I don't think he realized how many people were impacted by COVID, really understood the virus, um, nor did um, that individual really understand that people in that class might be affected too. So we really talked about how to be empathetic uh, to surrounding people and not just about COVID, just any topic that may be offensive. Um, and it was, uh, it was a really good conversation. And so um, I actually learned from that, that I needed to tackle that head on. Um, so I would definitely, if you're not doing it already, incorporate that. Um, and as I said before, you use your uh, office hours if you have them. And also, um, you really want to respect your students yourself. So respect the fact that they may be going through a hard time, but they don't want to share with the class. So what you can do is use an app called Calendly, and you can set up individual office hours during your office hours blocks where individual students can actually have a one-on-one -on -one with you, okay? Level two, participation and effort. All right, key features, trying new things, make it enjoyable. How do we measure engagement? Parti does participation equal success? All right, grading's difficult. It always has been, but we're going to get it. And then measuring your effort with outcome. A lot of this is going to sound a little repetitive, but it's super important. Student and voice, student voice and autonomy, okay? If your students are not digging what you are doing in class, they're gonna lose buy-in, they're gonna lose focus, and they're gonna lose enjoyment, and more than likely their participation and effort will start to dwindle a little bit. Um, so what I really want you to focus on is giving your students intake or opinions about how we're going to do this model. Um, they understand the model at this point, and if they don't go over it, and come up with ways that they can come up with the ideas. You might have to give examples at first, like if you're doing a creative play unit, show them how you've made a creative game, always give examples, but then let them run with it. And they may change the dynamic completely and that's okay. You are here to facilitate joy and that is a great way to do it, okay? Um, that also falls into student choice, building relationships, <laughs> You definitely want to uh, encourage 
uh, Zoom breakouts or stuff like that, kind of mix up the groups every once in a while because I have found, I actually went back to school today. Um, we're back at school today, which was wild. Um, it was so good to see everyone. But I noticed that kids that weren't friends before became friends through online learning and they were eating lunch with people that they've been grouped with and stuff like that. So you really want to give that opportunity for them to build relationships with different people. Okay, collaborative ideology. Um, you basically want to have a sense of collaboration and that goes along with autonomy and student voice and building relationships. But let them come up with multiple ideas in smaller groups. When you're talking about how can we implement different ways to um, achieve these standards and whatnot and these games and whatnot, um, break them into smaller groups because that really gives them the opportunity to voice their opinion and collaborate. If you put them in massive groups, there's going to be a lot of disconnect. Um, some people are just gonna hang back, but the smaller you can make the group within reason, the more voice everyone will have. And then measuring effort on others' experience. I like doing peer activities a lot because uh, our kids are really good at giving constructive criticism in a very positive manner. None of them have been negative, calling out people. And I think when you put this kind of situation to task, that uh, ripping on each other and stuff like that, talking smack kind of goes away because they really learn how to value what skills this student has and I'm seeing it firsthand and I get to help them uh, bring it to the next level. So that's been really beneficial. Okay, self-direction, key features, responsibility for own work, actions, and effort, ability of, sorry. <laughs> Uh, they are able to realize their needs and address how to make them attainable goals and also developing intrinsic motivation. Um, E-learning implements create reflection activity that focus on how, focuses on how one contributes to an activity. What a reflection activity is, is using movement and whatnot and having them analyze through think, pair, share, or some, something like that. A lot of times I have them make posters, like brain pop posters, if you know what I mean by that, or uh, mind maps. And uh, how did each movement in this activity um, help you succeed? What movements or um, strategies, stuff like that, did you implement yourself that helped the team and also helped yourself, okay? And then what else we do is we do a lot of skits and drama performances. There's no reason you can't take a different curriculum or uh, educational focus and implement it into physical education. So basically we create these skits where um, they have to read body language, okay? So let's say I'm in a skit with someone and you do Zoom breakouts that can go in their own groups and they actually, it's almost like filming a movie live because they present it to the class within their breakout, okay? So basically, if I'm standing like this, hanging back, one leg back, or whatever, okay? They're gonna analyze how does that make them feel? How are they perceiving that individual? And also, what the, can they do to either celebrate what their body language says or try to help them? So there's that sense of empathy again, and they're really focusing on how does this body language work and what signs am I getting from it? And what I've realized is students actually came up to me and they said, coach, I didn't realize that sometimes I totally do that body language and that's not the message I'm trying to send. So it really brings self-awareness to maybe something they didn't realize they were doing and um, learning how to kind of manage it and I've given them the strategies saying and basically sometimes you're gonna have body language that um you didn't mean to send out there and that's okay um just knowing uh, the best thing you can do is be aware of it and uh try to um work on it um so that's been really beneficial and then the other thing um we do is the same thing like drama performances but frustration in sports um and i this may sound funny or weird but bear with me 
Um, I coach varsity volleyball. I used to coach varsity basketball. And the first thing I would tell my uh, kids at the first practice is, what is the most important thing you'll do this season? And they'll say win or work together and stuff like that. And yeah, um, I have no problem with that, especially the working together. That's probably, in co on contrast, probably one of the most important things. But I say losing and becoming frustrated. And they say, what? And um, I basically explained that winning is great. Celebrating is great. Um, it's, it's one of the best feelings. But in order to learn about yourself as a true athlete, you need to lose. You need to experience frustration. And then you can analyze how you handle it. How are you handling a frustrating situation? How are you handling uh, a loss or something like that? Um, because that's going to really show you how to develop your character and also your body language and how other people perceive you. And you need to use that self-direction in order to send out the right message. Everyone knows it's okay to be frustrated, but are you channeling it the right ways? Are you throwing a fit, um, losing your cool? Are you bottling it down where it just builds up later? Or are you confronting someone, the coach or teammate, someone you trust in and saying, hey, I'm really having a hard time with this. Uh, I just need to talk to someone. Um, and even saying, I need to come out. Just so we uh, we do different skits on different ways to handle that and stuff like that. Uh, level four, caring and helping others. Uh, key features are showing compassion, empathy, and concern. Help one another reach group and individual goals. Learning how to lead and listen for the benefit of others, and allowing students to help each other in their learning environments. So e-learning implements, one of my favorite things to do is Zoom retreats. Now I want you to envision that you work for an office job or whatever, and you know how businesses a lot of time they go on those retreats in the woods for team building activities, stuff like that. That's exactly what you're gonna do with Zoom. You're going to do Zoom breakouts. And basically what you're going to do is team building activities um, with your group. So let me give you an example. You guys all know Cross the River, the game. When you're in the gym, you use poly spots, whatever, um, gymnastics mats, scooters. You've got to get from point A to point B. Excuse me, I got sniffles a little bit. So you're going to do that in your living room, all right? So you're going to use socks, shoes, pillows, blankets, whatever you can use, okay? And the per each person's going to take a turn in that group. And that person is going to cross the river but there's a catch the person who is crossing the river may not set up the um the path to cross the river they need their group members or their team building members who are on the zoom call to tell them where to put things and then they're going to guide them across the river and it may take a few tries they may need to fix things and stuff like that but they're working together and each person takes a turn. And I, I love watching those, man. It's a really good team building um, activity. Admiration videos and cards. Basically, I take out two names out of a hat. And um, basically, I pair those two up. And they can either send each other a video telling them what they appreciate about each other. You did this really well. I really like the way you uh, came up with that idea in TGFU, you have a really positive attitude. Or they can use Canva, I've created uh, Canva accounts, and uh, make a card and just say thank you. Like you can do as little as saying thank you, I appreciate you. It can be generic, but the kids have really uh, dived in into just uh, sending really thankful and thoughtful cards. So that, that has been awesome. Role model grouping, okay? What you want to do is you want to discuss what, um, how do I put this? The different aspects of a role model that you value and every student is going to say what they value in a role model. And then you're going to put each other in a group, okay? And you can do this on breakouts again and they can present later. And it's not so much a skit as they come up with ways in a game. They're going to create a game where each person is the, hero or role model, and they're going to show you through activity and explanation what those values are. 
and lastly, uh, student lessons have been amazing. Um, think about your student teaching or when you were in college, how much fun it was to present a lesson to class. Granted, there was a lot of pressure when we were doing that, but the students really love that, and that brings back that autonomy and whatnot. Whatever the subject is and whatnot, um, you can go back, and this is really good to do towards the end of quite a few units, um, and they will reteach things their way, implement games, fitness activities, fitness plans, um, dance, act, dance um, choreography or presentation, but they're in charge of the class, the, uh, that 10-minute block, because you want a couple of them to go. Um, and I just observe, and they completely take control of the class, and they really enjoy that, um, having that leadership. And um, I, I really recommend that as one way to implement caring and helping others. Sport education model. Uh, this is a fun one, and it's completely feasible at home. Okay, so first I'm going to give you an example. Basically, uh, hockey at home. Okay, you got a broomstick, you got three pairs of socks. So first one is a passing target. You're going to try to shoot or pass, rather, your sock and hit a plastic cup. Do not use anything other than a plastic cup because you don't want anything to break. Okay. Um, if you don't have plastic cups at home, you can use paper cups or just um, even like a hat um, would be fine because we want to limit the plastic in the world. I understand that. Um, I just happen to have solo cups at home, so that's how I uh, showed them. Um, and then what you're going to do is set up two uh, cups or hats or whatever and create a goal, and then they're going to shoot um, at the shooting target. Okay, you're going to go over the ways to hold the broomstick, like a hockey stick, stuff like that. Um, and also, once you start getting the hang of this, you can make it a competition, create a timer, stuff like that. Another one is a dribble course, okay? So I'm going to go around the chucks. <laughs> um, this way, this way, this way, this way, down, around, shoot. Okay, I know this is a wild diagram. Um, but it, it should be wild. It should be chaotic. You should really challenge yourself to get around the shoes and maintain control of that sock. Okay. And here's the cool thing about the sport education model. So basically you always want people to be involved. And when we start doing competitions like time competitions, I make sure that everyone in each group has a role when it's not their turn. Okay. Cause you really want people to observe each other. And appreciate the skills of one another, excuse me. So one person will keep track of the time, or if you're doing like uh, the sock ball three point shootout, uh, record the stats, how many they made. You have a referee. So maybe if you hit the, um, when you're dribbling, if you hit a shoe, that's a fall. You gotta count the falls. And then you're gonna have a coach. You're going to have someone giving you tips, helping you along the way. Um, and really coaching you through it. So everyone's involved and they're learning the different aspects of sports, not just playing it, okay? Cultural studies model. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do this. Um, so first thing I'm gonna do is talk about, I really like the kids to explore their heritage. Being at an international school, I just have them do a quick Google and then uh, they look up some of the games or sports of their country's uh, history and they present it to the, the class and we all play it together. And it, it's a great way to really appreciate where you come from and be able to share that pride, okay? Um, other ways is you want to, societal nuances in um, physical activity, just we focus on how physical activity focuses on um, how it can impact a community, different ways to do that. We do community outreach like through video. So we can do PSAs on the importance of physical activity, um, how it makes us feel, how much we think we should do a day, stuff like that, okay? So um, next we're gonna do outdoor education and adventure education. Super fun time right now. So 
For the first one, for outdoor education, if they're allowed to go outside, what I like to do is this photo scavenger hunt. And um, each time I'll give them a topic on stuff to find. So here's a couple photos I took. So I took um, photos of life. And um, so basically I put some plants in there. And another day we did photos of pride. And you can find that anyway, but it was actually a Vietnamese holiday and they had all their flags out. Um, so the kids have really enjoyed doing these things because not only are they moving, like walking around, but they really get into the angles and stuff. So they're squatting low, which is a movement. They're standing on their tiptoes to get the right angle. Um, so there's a lot of different movement involved and it still relates to physical activity. Okay, gamified level games, okay. Uh, Carlos Galvez, um, when I was at FaZe this year, did a whole presentation on gamification. I was blown away by it. And this was the perfect opportunity for me to implement some gamification. Because let's face it, I played video games as a kid. People love video games. It's a, um, it's a great tool when you know how to manage the screen time and whatnot uh, to really create innovative and creative ideas. But how can we do this and make it physical? I'm going to tell you. Okay, so I'm not going to show you the video. I'm going to link it in um, the uh, description. And also, if you uh, contact me on uh, Coach Pat 1984 on Twitter, I can give you all this stuff. So basically, I took Angry Birds with my wife, and we created Angry Pong. And the video game sense is basically you're going to have three levels. So level one is going to be kind of easy to complete and whatnot. Level two, there's gonna be more challenges and the level three is gonna be the most challenging because if you remember video games back in the day, there's always a boss level at the end and that's gonna be your boss level. So basically with Angry Pong and Andy Hare has done this as well. Um, his swing shot was better than mine. He put, he put like hundreds of rubber bands together. Um, but basically, I had uh, Nike hair bands and a ping pong ball. So basically, and then you could use like crumpled up paper or whatever if you don't have ping pong balls. Um, I had Legos and dominoes. So I set them up and they can use whatever just to knock something over. You get five tries to knock over as many of the little guys and gals that you can and the blocks. So level one, it's pretty simple. Not that many. Okay. Level two, um, I gave them the option of taking away the slingshot and bouncing. So as you can see, there's a barrier here and you need to not try to knock over all of these in five tries. Um, so there's a lot of ways you can do this. You can do Mario and stuff like that. I had my kids create their own um, three level video game adventure game. Um, and present it to the class. A lot of kids did Mario. Uh, kids did uh, Flappy Bird before Flappy Bird was a hot commodity. Um, so my kids started that. I'm just kidding. Uh, but uh, they really got creative and played a lot of different games. And some of the videos are awesome. Um, again, if you hit me up, I can share you some uh, ideas that they came up with. Okay. Teaching fitness for understanding. This is really important right now because I think it's super important that we engage in fitness, not just show a video. EMP all day. Okay, so maybe you need to divide the content and then bring it back and create a hybrid. Okay, so the first thing you wanna focus on is engagement. You need to be engaged with your kids. Okay, you need to participate in the movements, in the physical activity, and it doesn't need to be hugely rigorous, okay? You can totally do it, I believe in you, okay? Uh, so if you're doing burpees or whatever, or you're doing a boot camp, uh, set up your computer where you have space, a yoga mat, whatever, and uh, they're gonna follow along with you. Uh, you're gonna shanti um, this thing to the end, okay? Um, or P90X, whatever you wanna, are familiar with. And uh, you're also going to coach them through the movements. You want them to focus on the correct form, making sure they're breathing correctly, re focus on the importance of warm up and recovery together, and just find that motivation within, okay? So if someone has their butt too high in the air when they're doing a push-up, you're gonna give them a tip. You don't have to call them out individual. 
we, you, all you have to say is make sure your backs are straight um, and make sure your uh, arms are where they're supposed to be, stuff like that. And then you need to develop the purpose and understanding of fitness. How does each exercise relate to different muscle groups? Um, how does, what, uh, how do I say this? How does uh, muscular strength differ from muscular endurance or cardiovascular exercise? And also, what, um, what benefits are you gaining from each exercise? Flexibility, agility. Um, if you're at a high level with the high schoolers, you can talk about um, the different types of fast twitch and slow twitch muscle fibers. Okay, you want to focus when you're talking about anaerobic or aerobic, um, oxygen expenditure, VO2 max, and all of that stuff. And then you also want to talk about the intrinsic um, feelings of fitness. How does each workout build, build different types of endorphins? Because endorphins are built no matter what you do when you exercise. But if I do a heavy like CrossFit or weightlifting workout, it's going to be a different sort of great feeling than a runner's high. Okay, so you want to make them help them understand that whatnot. Also help them understand that if they uh, are having trouble completing something, that's okay. How can we work together um, to improve upon that? So uh, fitness is great, but make sure it's purposeful and there's understanding there. Okay, health and wellness model. Okay, this is so important right now. We need, really need to focus on our kids. So here's what we're gonna focus on. Reflection, reflection, reflection. It's so important to reflect on how we are doing. And I'm not talking about in the school sense, I'm talking about individuals and really creating that uh, relationship of caring for one another. Um, check in with your students. Don't just dive into a class right away. Ask students what they're doing. Chances, there's a high chance they might just say fine or okay, but um, you need to make sure that they know you care. I, I, I send, once a week, I, I send a gratitude message to all my students, basically saying how much they mean to me, um, the great things they're doing, what I really loved about the week, and being involved with them, how much I miss them. So you really need to give them that opportunity to reflect and converse with you. Uh, sleep. Sleep has been super difficult at the beginning of this. Kids were staying up all night because they kind of treated it like vacation because they didn't have to get on a bus and go to school. Um, so you need to really routine, routine, routine. Talk about routines. I told them that um, I'm on the same schedule, but I'm still going to bed at nine o'clock so I can get a workout in in the morning and be fresh and ready for the day. Um, nutrition, you wanna talk about the different ways of how, uh, actually I'm gonna do nutrition and movement together. How does nutrition impact the way you move? Um, of course it's okay to indulge, you guys are young, um, you're growing, um, your appetites are different, but you wanna make sure you're mostly putting good things in your body because if you, and most of my kids love to move and if they wanna create a physical activity in the afternoon or shoot some hoops or whatever, they're more not as likely to really be engaged and enjoy it as much if they're eating uh, crummy foods and feeling sluggish and stuff like that, okay? Fear, this is a scary time. We really need to focus on alleviating these fears as much as we can. Um, but aside from alleviating, we need to show them that we have a little fear in us and it's okay to feel this way. We are here to be here together and to help each other um, through everything. And whether they wanted to divulge their fears or whatnot, and a lot of them have done that on the one-on-one -on -one office hours, um, you just need to be ready to listen. You might not ha have all the answers, but half the time these kids just want someone to hear what they're going through. And if you can relate to it in any way, that'll be perfect. And then safety. Um, you and I don't mean in the physical sense so much, but uh, relating to fear, you really want to have kids feel safe in your class. You want them to realize that you're in this with them. You're here to take care of them. You're here to love them. Um, you're treating each student as if they were your own and you're really taking care of their needs and their focuses. If they're worried about something, you're available for them to reach out to you and really um, just help them feel better um, and feel secure in their place in the classroom. Okay, lastly, this is not a curriculum model. Real quick, 
Uh, I created this uh, Playopoly board for families to play. Uh, they're not always used to their mom being home all the time or their dad being home all the time. So basically, um, I created this so they could play it at home with their parents. Uh, we did this as a class a couple times, so they got used to different things. Um, creative play games, fitness, wellness, uh, student-made games. And then what you do, I got this idea from, from Dale Sidebottom, you basically just make a blank board, send it home and let them play. And kids have been hitting me up that are not even in my class asking for blank boards. So um, really encourage different ways for them to play with their families. Okay, that is my presentation. But before I go, I would like to shout out my buddy, Jace Ferguson, okay? Because I have given you resources and examples of how to implement uh, the different curriculum models, but planning makes it perfect. And Jace Ferguson has a fantastic ebook on um, purposeful planning and creating unit plans, and they have been super helpful with online learning. So on Twitter, he is at Grand Muchacho, um, and you can find this uh, ebook on his website at tincanphyzed.com. Okay, that is my, the end of my presentation. I am within a minute. I'm so excited. I'm so happy you guys came, man. Like, this is so fun for me. I really like sharing ideas. And by no means do I think this is the end all be all or even the best ideas, but I'm super stoked you tuned in. And thank you so much for stopping by. Um, it really means so much to me. And um, you guys have been amazing. So thank you so much. Um, so that's the end of my presentation. Um, I hope you have a lot of fun during this summit. Uh, stay stellar, rock on.